I shook that off. I was like, whatever. I need a break. I need to. I need to take some time at the bar. And I still remember popping that Dos Equis and saying, "Enjoy that mind control. I'm going to enjoy my Sunday." So I went to the liquor store, got myself a big bottle of Sky Vanilla Vodka、mm. and a big old flask, one of those nice pervy ones that you could fit in a pocket and still looks like it's partying. I'm like, all right, if I'm gonna have to deal with all these hypocrites, I might as well be tanked. I kind of look back, wondering if anybody even knew I was tanked, because my tolerance was quite well as a fireman. Boom! I was in the darkness, but this time it was hot. Dante's Inferno has nine circles of hell. What I experienced was seven. He said, "You will follow me. The Lord has things to show you." And if you do not come willingly, he said, "You're coming all the same." I didn't know about any of that, by the way. I hadn't opened a Bible, and it's just a big circle going down. This is the same way it is taking this trek into the inner depths of hell. Some sections, the walls of hell, are prisons. I didn't get to that section until number seven. Everything I'm about to tell you. Everything that I've seen in these different sections, and by the way, as I was walking, I had a distinct impression because he's the only light that I had, and I had I knew that if I did not keep up with him, that I would be sucked into everything that I'm seeing. Your hearing, your seeing, your perception, all of that is magnified in that place. Everything I'm telling you, all the things that you're about to hear. Are happening in absolute pitch black darkness. Some things I have to say are graphic. I'm going to try to make it as church possible, as possible. But I'm going to help you understand the magnitude of what is going on. If you're young ears or soft hearts, this might not be for you. Welcome to Touching the Afterlife. This is Julie. I'm so blessed today to bring Ryan. I'm actually getting emotional,、uh, and I just want you to know that this is a powerful testimony. It's the Lord prompted him to come out with it for the first time. You don't want to miss this. So, welcome with me today, Ryan. Ryan Cook, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me, Julie. It's an honor to be here. It's, It's an such an honor to you to speak for God. Amen. Well,、um, Ryan, let's kick it off with.、Uh, I know your childhood, your parents, and、yeah. everything that they experienced. Let's start there because this is where this journey begins. Yes, I, I'd like to start off with saying,、um, with what I have to say, it's not to scare anybody. God wants no one to go to hell. It is not his intentions for anyone to ever be in hell.、Um, you're, you're now speaking to a deliverance minister, by the way. I want to tell you right now that this testimony is because he wants eternity with you. He wants eternity with what he desired when he put himself on that cross. When he took every nail, he did it for you. This is. A plea. It's it's a warning. I mean, I'm I'm even getting emotional myself, even having to give this testimony. In 2011, I experienced hell for three nights, and I pray that no one else has to. But the Father will pursue you with whatever He has. When I was a child. I was a very active dreamer. I've always been an active dreamer, but my parents—I I didn't understand, and a child can't—that the sins of the mother and the father will follow, and that's exactly what happened. You see, my father was away from God. He was backslid. He was、uh, what we like to joke about in the South.、Uh, he was a Sunday Baptist, and my mother—well, when he met her in Trinidad. That's where the tan comes from, by the way. She, he assumed she was a Catholic. You see, when you run into what's the occult known as Santeria, 
Santeria takes Catholicism imagery and it places it over what is, in essence, black magic, voodoo. I got to grow up around this. I didn't realize this at the time. I didn't realize what was following me, what was in my bloodline. It's called generational curses. What followed me was astral projecting. I wasn't an active dreamer. As all everybody wants to say, a child just has a great imagination. No, I was actually traveling my whole life. Every time I hit that pillow, I was going into a new place, a new place, a new place. Originally, the things that I experienced were heavenly. They were things of heaven. They were things of light. But as I found, as I grew older, and particularly going towards my teens, the imagery became darker and darker and darker. What I did not realize was every time I trespassed against the Lord, I was going further down the hole. It wasn't by my own decision. A child does not know. Unlike those who are in the occult actively, uh, if you're born into it, you just receive what your inheritance is. And in this case, this led me to hell. But not without God's mercy. He sent me a messenger for three days. But I was not in the faith. I was not in the faith. At that time, I was a... Uh, so. You're talking to a guy that was a uh, firefighter for 12 years. I worked uh, in the city fire back in Texas, Houston, Texas to be particular. And I also worked for Dow Chemical Fire. At that time, I was just working my life away. I was going shift after shift after shift. I didn't have time for church. I still remember my father, uh, because he was now starting to come to the faith, begging me, begging me to come to church. And I still remember popping that dos equis and saying, enjoy that mind control. I'm going to enjoy my Sunday as I started drinking early on a Sunday morning. You see, the Lord doesn't allow me to forget these moments because he wants me to remember where I came from to where he's taking me now. This is probably why this testimony took 12 years roughly in the making to give. Because he had to work on me. He had to humble me. He had to develop me. Because otherwise, you would just have a lukewarm Christian giving an account of hell. But now you actually have a fiery minister of God telling you why you need to listen. I was given a messenger for three nights. God will show himself, even to those that don't believe this is why those in the Middle East right now, they go to sleep a radical Muslim and they wake up in the morning as a radical Christian because a man in white came to visit them in the middle of the night. And what they experienced in their dreams, just as the Bible has, God has visited so many people in their dreams, he will do it again and again and again. Yes. The God that was yesterday is still the God that is today. He still does exactly what he did back then. Don't let anybody lie to you that the book of Acts is closed. There's no ending to it. We're living through those last days, and you're listening to a last day's testimony because time is short. Mm. My first night that I was visited, mm. this messenger of God, and by the way, he'll come to you in ways that you understand. He came to me as an old fireman. Here I am in the modern gear, as you see most of your farm in the no mechs or reflective gear and all that. I was in a darkness where I could only see him. This guy was in all cotton gear and a leather helm. And he said, it took you long enough to get here. I've been waiting for you. And I said, who are you? And he said, after all the times that I've saved your skin, you still have no idea who has your back. He said, you probably still think you're talking to a fireman. He said, Ryan, I'm here to warn you. If you do not seek refuge in the Lord, famine shall come upon your household. He said, my full hand shall be against you. He said, I do not want to do this to you, son, but you give me no other choice 
seek now refuge in the Lord before I have to do something drastic. Well, I woke up with my ex at the time and I, I looked at her because we were both atheists. I mean, I, here I was with my science degrees and um, I'd seen so much as a firefighter and paramedic that I looked at it going, there's no God. I've watched so many kids die in the back of my ambulance. How can there be? I've watched so much horrible things happen. I went, this is just a bedtime story to keep people feeling better about themselves at night. You see, the wisdom of man made foolish, right? Because God will prove himself God and he will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. And I'm going to tell you, those of you that are on the side of atheism, he will pursue you. He will pursue you. He will not allow you to not have a chance to know his son. Because that's exactly what happened next. I shook that off. I was like, whatever. <laughs> Famine upon me. Oh, I need a break. I need to, I need to take some time at the bar or go on a vacation. Um, I'm letting the stress get to me. Mm. Well, here I was six months later. I got laid off from my job. Working down. And um, the city lost a lot of funding for their budget. So at that time, my city job was drying up on its hours, too. I was only getting a sprinkle of hours. And then I had that echo in my mind, a famine is upon you. Mm -hmm. and I remember thinking to myself going, nah, that can't be it. Nah, what? Calm down, Ryan. You just need to do what the doctors say you need to do. So what did I do? Because a believer in, in pharmacia, one that actually practices it as a paramedic, I'm like, I need to go see a doc. Well, they do. They give you stuff to ease your nerves, relax you a little bit, help you believe everything's going to be okay. Well, guess what? That night after I saw that doctor, I had my next visit. My next visit was from this messenger. And this time I'm back in that darkness that can be felt. And by the way, if you're wondering what that kind of feels like, imagine being in Walmart and someone racks the breakers. You can feel people, or you presume it's people, bumping into you. You feel things walking by and breathing past you, but you can't see them. You cannot visualize it. You can't perceive what's going on around you. But this time, a great wind was blowing. And he said, Ryan, he said, you failed to listen to me. You failed to hear and heed to my warning. He said, but I am merciful and I am full of grace, and I give you the chance once again to accept my hand and accept my mercy. Seek me now, for the storm is now upon you. Mm -hmm. I woke up, and I, I remember I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous, and I thought to myself, <laughs> I'm like, okay, the stress is getting to me. Mm. Uh, I've lost a job. It must be the new medication I'm on. <laughs> uh, this obviously can't be God. Um, who believes in that anyways, that doesn't prescribe to a church. I don't even have a pastor or a church to call home. And I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, I understand what's going on now. It's just critical stress. No big deal. I again ignored it. So here we are, my father pursuing me once again. And by the way, he wasn't always a holy man his whole life. He ended well, though. He was more like Hank Williams than he was a pastor the majority of his life. But in his last 12 years, he went out with a bang. This is why I'm a pastor now. I'm yeah. continuing what he started. Mm -hmm. He was so bold that just preaching in America wouldn't do it for him. He went to Mexico. He went to China. I still remember him sneaking into China, picking up a job, a job, acting like he's trading steel. But what he did was he grabbed all these USB sticks, had every one of them filled with all these kind of trading papers for this Chinese company. But he had no intention to work for them at all. He had them all encrypted with the word of God. So every one of them had an encrypted Bible within them. And he passed that out to the underground churches. Wow, that's boldness. Mm, yeah. That's boldness. So that version of my father, the one that's on fire like I am now, 
was begging me to come to church. He said, Ryan, he said, I will help pay your bills if you will just attend this New Year's Eve party. Because those New Year's Eve at his church, and I'm like, man, they're, they're some charismatic weirdos. They're wanting to get down at five in the afternoon all the way till midnight. I'm like, that is enduring. I didn't realize at that time, me getting angry and, and full of anxiety, even wanting to hang out with these people, was what we call manifestation. Um, <laughs> now I see it across from me all the time when uh, my wife and I are counseling people. Uh, we, we watch people getting angry like that. We watch people getting full of anxiety. That's because what is in you does not want to be revealed. So what does the devil do? He tries to give you a Band-Aid. And they did for me that night. I had an idea, and I thought it was my idea. I was like, this is so brilliant. Yeah, let's do it. I'm like, they don't know what I'm drinking. So I went to the liquor store, got myself a big bottle of Sky Vanilla Vodka mm. and a big old flask. One of those nice curvy ones that you could fit in a pocket and still looks like it's partying. I filled that thing full. I'm like, all right, if I'm going to have to deal with all these hypocrites, I might as well be tanked. Mm. And I still remember before I went to that party, there was that little voice that said to me, don't do it. Mm. I remember that voice, man. <laughs> wow, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit on me right now. He's like, yep, mm. I did warn you back then. Mm. So understand, he'll warn you. He will try to speak to you so many times before he has to actually show you things that you wish you never saw. So, I'm sorry for the crying up. I mean, I'm, I'm just getting full of God right now, to even mm -hmm. giving this testimony. So I went to that party and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. <laughs> oh, I was three sheets to the wind amongst a ton of Christians. I kind of look back wondering if anybody even knew I was tanks because my tolerance was quite well as a fireman. You see, it's one of our, uh, anybody that's a soldier, police officer, or firefighter, we're well versed in the bottle. And if it's not the bottle, it's something else because you can't do these jobs without having a form of release. Mm -hmm. But the only true release is God, right? Mm -hmm. So I went through that night and went, I still remember the moment my head hit that pillow. Boom. I was in the darkness, but this time it was hot. It was boiling hot. It was, I was burning up in this, in this darkness. And then that fireman walked up in the middle of the darkness and he said, you have not heard, nor have you listened to any warning I've given you. Do you know where you are? I said, I have no idea where I am. He said, this is the place you shall visit for your disobedience. He said, Ryan, is there a fire? And I said, uh, no, I don't see any. I said, I just feel the heat. He said, let me help you. Boom. Got to watch the darkness light up. And what was underneath me was, oh, it was a fire like we've never seen here on earth. You see, everybody perceives hell. And that picture I sent you the other day is pretty accurate. But the only difference is it's not orange, yellow flame like we see in, in this life. It's the hottest flame reserve for the devil. It's blue. Mm. You're burning up in God's fury. That eternal flame is there to torment you day and night, night and day. It is like uh, when you look into a, a natural gas heater. It's about like that. So this was where I was. And he said, some lessons have to be taught. He said, I shall revisit you for three nights and you shall make a decision where you stay. This time I woke back up, boom, and I'm, I'm soaking wet. I'm soaking wet with sweat. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I, and I remember my ex looking at me like, what's going on? 
she's like, you're soaking wet. Are you running fever? I'm like, no. <laughs> I mm-hmm. said, I believe there's a God. And I believe he's telling me I'm going to hell. I was shaken by the experience. It, it was, it was, I, I thought to myself that that was it. <laughs> I didn't realize at that moment he was looking for me to repent. Can I ask you one thing? You, yeah. This is an angel, the same angel. Did he appear the same to you all three nights? That's correct. Okay. All three nights. The only difference was the one that I actually walked through hell with. <laughs> that wasn't him. I got to understand who that next one was. This was just the messenger to warn. Mm-hmm. And to let you know, uh, there was one variation to him. In the last message, he no longer was wearing the bunker gear on his upper torso. It was armor, like we perceive in the Middle Ages, like breastplate, the breastplate of God. Yes, angelic armor, because he no longer had to try to come to me in a way I understand. Mm. Yeah, that, that part changed. You're right. Third one, third time, he was... God was not trying to ease his way to me. Instead, he was coming at me with a magnitude of let me know, hey, you're dealing with me now. So at this time, I I just thought to myself, I'm like, okay, I understand there's a God trying to tell me I, I'm doing wrong. That's fine. Um, and I, I still remember just going to a church and I said that sinner's prayer. I'm like, okay, that must be it. Cool. I punched my ticket. Oh, you, you said know. sinner's prayer that night when you were drunk, uh, when you're dead. No, no. Uh, oh. I went back to the church after seeing, after seeing what I saw in the third dream. Okay. That was after that. That was after that night of getting drunk at that church. Okay. What I did not realize was when God makes a decision, He makes a decision and no different than a child. If they keep continually silly, tell you they're sorry, but they don't have a full understanding of it. God's still going to do what he said he is going to do, but with mercy, there's still mercy upon it because it was that next night that I found myself in hell. And it's not the way people always perceive it. Everybody's like pitchforks, devils. Yes. Yes. There's, there's some con- concepts where I can see why people have come to that conclusion, but the journey he took me through was closer to Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno has nine circles of hell. What I experienced was seven. I remember asking the Lord, why seven? He said, because that's my perfect will and my perfect number. That night that I fell asleep, I woke up, this time following a messenger. And to give you an idea what this messenger looked like, it's wild. He looked he looked like an angelic prison guard. Why do I say guard? Is because he had the chains and shackles to take you forcefully if you don't go willingly. He said, you will follow me. The Lord has things to show you. And if you do not come willingly, he said, you're coming all the same. So I was following him. And here's the interesting thing. Is things that we've read in uh, the Romans, the Greek mythology, the Egyptians, everybody, I think, has maybe some pieces to it. Because we hear about the river of sticks. Oh, that's real. I don't know if it's called the river of sticks, but I can tell you, we walked up to a river and we're just walking in a forest, walked up to a river and it was in a clearing and this river parted just like Moses would part the sea. I didn't know about any of that, by the way, I hadn't opened a Bible. So I'm just experiencing things in the raw. And as I was walking through this, just to give you an idea of what that river looks like and the magnitude of it, as you walk by, you can see all the souls that were moving through this river. 
They look like faces. That's the best way to explain it. And it's almost like we broke up an intersection of traffic. They were waiting for us to pass so they can continue wherever it is that they go. The moment we exited that river on the other side, the world was gray. The world was becoming more void of light. So imagine the life we have right now without color. And the further you walk, the darker it gets. This is our way through. If you're looking at Dante, he calls it limbo. I nicknamed it the gray world. <laughs> because uh, that's exactly all you see. It is, it is this life void of life. And the further you walk away from that river, void of light as well. <sighs> the lack of God's presence is light. I want, I want people to understand something. Everyone who's against God, Satanists, those in the occult, those who are just atheists, those who are even agnostic, those who follow other gods, I need you to understand something. When you wake up every morning to the sunlight, you're waking up to his presence. When you wake up to that wind blowing on your face, you're waking up to his presence. There's no wind. There's no wind where I'm going, where we're going in this story. There's no sunlight. There's only pain. And there's suffering. The further you walk through this darkness, the more you feel that you deserve it. The more you're being told in here that you have walked away from God. And everything that's about to happen, you deserve it all. Something interesting to tell you about hell. It's a place of constant reminder. There's a constant reminder <laughs> that this is where you belong and you deserve it. This is part of the torment of that place. So as we walk past the gray and it got into the darkness, this led to and I didn't even realize I was seeing levels, by the way. As we walked, I want you to imagine a mine quarry. You know, like you ever saw where, where they're mining the earth and it's just a big circle going down because of how many times they have torn away at the earth. This is the same way it is taking this trek into the inner depths of hell. Mm. Each ring is a different level because each ring is a different section in a reserve. Some sections, the walls of hell are prisons. I didn't get to that section until number seven. When we get to there, the first section I walked into is just as it is in Dante's. It's lust. Everything I'm about to tell you, everything that I've seen in these different sections. And by the way, as I was walking, with this messenger, I had a distinct impression because he's the only light that I had. And I can feel the darkness trying to reach me, trying to grab me, trying to pull me in. And I, had, I knew that if I did not keep up with him, that I would be sucked into everything that I'm seeing. There is no light in these outer realms. There's light when you get to the lake of fire. But the eyes that we have here are not the eyes we have down there. You can see in utter darkness just like a cat. You can see what's going on. It's supernatural. All your senses are heightened. Your hearing, your seeing, your perception, all of that is magnified in that place. Everything I'm telling you, all the things that you're about to hear, are happening in absolute pitch black darkness. But the Lord allowed me to see it. So this way, I guess, not only for me being saved, thank you, Lord, but also for you. So in the realm of lust, and forgive me for those of y'all that hear this, I, I have to go ahead and probably take a pause since this is gonna be in the public view. Some things I have to say are graphic. I'm going to try to make it as church possible. 
as possible, but I'm going to help you understand the magnitude of what is going on. So if you're young ears or soft hearts, this might not be for you. The demons down there, they consistently torment. They force people to fornicate with devils until their flesh falls off. I want you to imagine fornicating against your will until the point that your flesh can no longer stay on your bones. And then when you're down to your bones, you just regenerate to experience it again and again and again and again. But there is a particularly difference between those that are tormenting to those who were receiving a specific torment. The Lord allowed me to understand the difference. You see, those that are just getting generally tormented, these were, these were lukewarm Christians that believed that they could fornicate, that they could be in pornography, that they could be of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and there wouldn't be a consequence. They were given over to their desires, and the devils enjoyed tormenting them more than they did the sinners. You saw that the sinners were tormented, but the ones that had that upon them, and you're probably going, what does that look like? How do you know which ones are were Christians and the ones that were not? I'm glad you asked. There's a light that was in them that the devils were constantly trying to rip away from their flesh. They were consuming the glow that was left upon them. The best way to explain it is imagine anointing oil that was once on something, but you can smell the what's left over. Just that, that, that pitch. It's the same thing. You were once in the presence of God. Unlike those that are darkness, they hate you more because you have the residue of light. Now on to those that were really dark. They got special assignments. Those who raped others in this life were raped themselves. It was a consistent thing, but the demonic thing about it was they were raped by those that they raped. These demons took on this imagery and this was their punishment forever. I wish it could, I could say it got better, but it got worse. Those that molested children, molested as children. God kept them in the form as children to experience what they did to other children. So forever they were tormented in hell for the things they did in this life. This messenger asked me, he said, have you had enough of this? Do you understand what's going on here? And I said, I do. He said, then we must move on. There's much to show you. This is also why I, after an experience like this, I, I look at movies like The Christmas Carol and the spirits of Christmas past, things like that. I'm looking at it going, I think people have actually had experiences with angels and they didn't know how to quite say it correctly, so they made it fictional. They made it into a story, a tale. But when you actually are on this side of things, you understand you're dealing with much more. Level three, gluttony. And by the way, this is just the downward spiral I was telling you about. We're walking in one huge circle. It just goes down like a corkscrew. Gluttony. In this level, I got to watch people, and you just you knew their sin. And that's a supernatural thing of when you're in hell, you know the sins, they're being spoken to you, and you're watching these horrible things. <sighs> they were all at a large banquet table. They were all being fed the things that pleased them in this life. The things they loved most, those that love steak, they were being given 
steak, steak, steak. Those that, are, that love sweets and desserts were being given desserts. Those that love the fine things in life, <laughs> the breads, the caviars, they, every time they ate a spoonful or broke a piece, there was more back there. But the difference is, is that what was pleasure in this earth was being meant for torment. The demons said, let them eat cake. That, that words, that, that phrase was continuously repeated. Let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. As they forced them to continue to eat more until, I'm going to put it bluntly, their, their innards ruptured. And then they did it again after they regenerated. A horrible torture. The for some their food, the others that were not ruptured, they did not destroy them with their food. They tormented them with what was in the food. Everything you feared in this life. Some of them they put it in the food. There were some people as they bit the food, fire ants would come out. Others, spiders would come out. Scorpions would come out. Each torment was customized to the individual for the highest output of torment and torture. And then the messenger said to me, do you understand what's going on in this level? And I said, I do. And he said, then it's time to move on. Your time is short. <sighs> so then we go to our next level. Greed. Greed is a disturbing level. As we walk down this corridor, like I said, a big circle. And you can see a glow in the distance, by the way. You could see some kind of glow because we're in that pitch black. It, in the beginning, it looks like there's a campfire at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. That's the best way to explain it. So, you know, someone has a fire down there. You just have no idea how massive that fire is. So, in this level, and this gives you an idea of the devils we're dealing with, people were force-fed Judas Silver. But there was something that's very disturbing about it. I mean, the silver is already bad enough as people's teeth bit down on the silver. Their teeth shattered and they bled and they screamed. And they were in agony and they choked on the money. But $100 bills of different time periods, by the way. So it's not just U.S. currency. I'm talking all forms of currency mm -hmm. fluttered down out of nowhere. Because there's no sky there. It just fell out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But here's what I found most disturbing. You would think the coins were the most disturbing. Pink Floyd played the song Money. That song plays in hell on loop in this level. It is a constant reminder to everybody what they traded their life for, what they traded their glory for, what they traded their eternity for. But I can say that's only one portion of the gluttony level. As we continued walking, there was some that are, you could tell were, they were ancient souls. They were not like we are. Because what, like we are, we were tormented with the bills falling, right? Now you're going to the souls of an older age. This older age was the age of gold. You had some that were consistently vomiting molten gold. They were just continuously throwing up gold in its molten form. And they were being literally consumed until they're like everything else, you were down to your skeletal and then you regenerated. Others, others were forced to drink molten gold. But here's the thing about those that were forced to drink molten gold. You watched these statues of false gods, of all these different gods, many gods. They would melt them in front of them and it would be force fed into them. So just they kept them with their mouths open and they would have to drink their idols. Yes. Mm. This was the end of gluttony. That messenger said to me, he said, have you seen enough? And I said, I have. 
he said, then we need to go. This led to level five, anger. Anger was a really horrible level. As you entered there, you watched people from all different time periods in constant combat. It was combat that never ended. But what, one of the things that was so wild about it was I could feel it being ministered to me internally. Like I said, that internal voice, it's almost like going on a tour. And then instead of hearing that voice on the outside saying, if you look to your right, you'll see. If you look to your left, you'll see. Instead, it's in you. And I believe that's the Holy Spirit ministering in this case. He said, observe. Their blood is boiling so much with anger that it's coming out of their eyes. And that was so. Their, everyone's blood pressure was so high that the capillaries in their eyes were bursting and they were bleeding out of their eyes, thus seeing red. I watched Civil War reenacted. I watched every, there was every war. And that was the wild thing was all these different enactments. I'm talking Romans, I'm talking Egyptians. I'm talking every war that's ever happened. That, that section of anger just continuously happened forever. But then it got more intimate as we walked on. I watched people that died in angry moments. I watched two men that were in a bar fight with broken glass and they were continuously stabbing each other, slitting each other and tormenting each other, but they would not bleed out. They were just locked in an eternal mortal combat. They could not die. I watched others who were angry in their last moments and they went to shoot others. And as they shot the gun, and this shows how physics are different down there, the bullet went forward and then shot them through the back of their head. They fell down and then they got up and then they did it again. And then they did it again. And then they did it again. And then I, that messenger said, I know this is a lot, but you must witness one more. He said, those who are angry at God, he said, they need to see this. And he took me further as those that screamed out at God in anger. Those that screamed out at God in anger, they cons consistently had brimstone right upon them. I'm talking like the stuff of Sodom and Gomorrah, fiery, sulfury brimstone was pouring down upon them like rain, a constant rain they could not escape, and they knew it. They were all on their knees. They were all just accepting it as this molten fire burnt away their flesh and burnt away their member down once again, down to the skeleton, then you regenerate again. And then the messenger said, this is enough of this level. We must move on. Level six, heresy. Heresy is, before I even go into this, I want to explain something about heresy. I'm not here to judge anybody. The people and the things that I've seen in heresy, that's between you and God. Just understand what I saw is my testimony. So you need to really take it to the Lord. The reason being is what I saw is judgment and it matches up with the Bible. And I'm going to tell you, God can't be mocked. We can have all the pleasures of our, this life. We can, this is why we have pastors that agree with us. This is why we have pastors saying God loves you just the way you are. And he doesn't want you to change. We have the feel good ministry right now of God wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy. He wants everybody to have a pony and every day to be a Friday. That's sending a lot of people to hell. Literally. The first part of this level, I watched the religious and the lukewarm being crucified upside down. Hell hates them more than anybody else. Isn't that wild? The religious, they hate them. Because they were this close to not having to be there. But the angels are glad that they are. And I say angels because I mean fallen angels. The tormentors of hell. They work for Lucifer himself. 
these people are given over to a grand delusion. They're being crucified. Understand they're being slit open like fish. And they argue amongst each other as they're on their crosses being crucified upside down. And they try to argue about how holy they are versus the other people around them. They have literally no understanding they're in hell, being tormented, being crucified eternally. But their ego, their pride, continuously has them in a state of torment that they will never understand, they'll never break from. The lukewarm are always there saying, why me? I don't deserve to be here. I was a good person. And the demons tell them, he denied you as you denied him. <laughs> they let you know for eternity why you're there. The next part of this level, and this one hits home with what I do. I witnessed pastors, and I was told they're pastors who stole from the tithe. They were all given knives, and there were scales before them. They were all forced to cut out however many pounds of silver that they stole from the plate and put it on the scales. The irony of it all is the scales were never satisfied. Mm. They were consistently having to cut from themselves because they'd cut away from what God had. That's horrible. But there's more. <sighs> you see, this is the things that he saved me from, but God I asked God for remembrance, and he gave it so this way every one of you can hear this testimony in its full accuracy. The next portion, I watched the sodomites. I watched men that slept with men. They were now forced to fornicate with demons. These demons looked like men. But inside, they were full of molten, hot, I... I the best thing I can say is it's like fire. It is fire. It's consuming fire. These men did not want to fornicate. They knew what was going to happen, I guess, because they've relived the torment a million times, but they could not help themselves. As they began to fornicate with these demons, they would literally waste away. The same as if I took a hot dog and I put it on hot coal, and you would watch it burst and shrivel and cook. They would cook themselves because, and I heard the Spirit say, by their own hand, they have chosen their own judgment. I shall not be mocked. The next one was women who slept with women. I watched them forced to sew shut over and over and over. And I heard the words, if modesty was their portion in life, they wouldn't have to try to have modesty in hell. I'm going to tell you, God is vengeful, but he's also merciful. This is the whole reason he's called me to this moment. The messenger then told me after I watched the women and I was disgusted by it. He said, have you had enough? There's many in this level. And I said, I've had enough. And he said, so be it. On to your greatest challenge yet. I walked out into a clearing. And this is that picture I showed you. But like I said, don't think about it as orange and yellow flame. It's all blue. It's all raging fire. Blue and white to be actually most accurate. On the walls, there was jail cells. There was jail cells in this level. All the walls, that it was carved into the walls of hell. <sighs> These people, they all had special hell. Each one of the cells, special torments. I got to realize that everybody that I had seen in, before, that was, gener that was general omission. I mean, those things that I've told you, that, 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 that is horrible stuff. 
but that was general admission. That was like going to a theme park before you had the special roller coaster. <laughs> Each one in these jail cells, and it was innumerable. The best way for me to explain it. <laughs> when Neo wakes up in the Matrix, in the movie The Matrix, the first one, and he sees all the pods. Yes. Imagine that now for jail cells. Each soul has a jail cell and it has tormentors in it. The first cell that I was allowed to see belonged to false teachers and false prophets. For the rest of their days, they were forced to consume altar coal. I'm talking the fiery altar coal that is on the altar of the holies of holies. Since they considered themselves holy, and this coal was blue burning, intense. Not like the coal that we have in our barbecue pits. <clears throat> and I heard in the spirit, because they blaspheme my word to consider themselves holy, I will allow them to taste the wrath of true holiness. And they consume this coal eternally. Again and again. And just as everything else, until you're down to your frame, and then you're brought back to experience it eternally. I watch serial killers in their cells being killed by over and over by the people that they killed. The demons would take on the forms of the people that they killed and they would kill them over and over and over. And what's here's what's interesting. They would kill them in the ways that they were killed. It literally is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth down there. So the way they treated others they were treated themselves i next got to see tyrants i could tell they were all war tyrants government tyrants but the one that i was allowed to see was caesar i watched caesar continuously get getting stabbed in the back over and over and over there's others i saw that tried to take their way out they, they were picking up guns Again, 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 so in their throat. Whatever violent way these tyrants tried to get the easy button was continuously their torment. And those that weren't torment like that, it was by how they were betrayed. But they had no peace. They had no, they had nothing to ease them. Some of the other cells were sadists. I watched sadists have their skin peeled like a potato. Since they enjoyed pain, giving pain to others in that in this life, in their eternity, they received pain eternally. They were constantly peeled of their skin, and it had no end. The next cells, I was being told they were masochists. Since they enjoyed pain in this life, they were they were bound to large stones, large sharp stones like you would flint. They were rolled cons consistently being tormented by these large sharp stones. They were allowed to experience the consistent pain that they so desired in this life. That the Lord made it their portion. That was of the masochist. Just as the sadists, they received pain because that's what they gave. By the way, level seven, if you were looking at Dante's Inferno, they call it violence, which is fitting. But like I said, I, ne I never saw the, the other two levels that um, Dante claims, the fraud and treachery. No, those, those didn't happen. But level seven is quite intense. It continues. As I was following this messenger, I passed jail cells of people that I... I would knew were witches, warlocks, and wizards. And they were tormented by their own magic that they used in this life. I was shown those, those that threw curses upon others, they were cursed themselves. Those who spoke curses, they were consistently vomiting up nails. Nails like what Christ was crucified with they consistently cough those up. 
others that hurt others with word curses, and I'm, I'm, that's that's my understanding of it. They were coughing up broken glass. I also got to watch those that I, I now understand after being a deliverance minister or probably of the voodoo variety. They had a demon outside their cell that had a doll. They had a doll of them and they would torment that doll and it would torment them eternally. I watched those who practiced with fire magic. Their magic would burn them up and incinerate them. It, they had no control over it like they did in this life. Whatever that was that made them special to the devil, the devil now used it to make it their special torment. It's a very ironic way of seeing things. But the shapeshifters were among, amongst one of the most interesting. You could tell that they were the shamans in the Native American variety. They kept on shifting into different animals, and they couldn't stop. It was a constant shift. They would become a different animal, become a different animal, become a different animal, and they were screaming, and then they were becoming a different animal. It was a constant torment of they could not control who they were shifting into. So, level eight. This is where the, the angel told me, he said, you've seen enough here. He said, now it's time for you to experience your eternity. We walked down and I saw the lake of fire ahead and I was thrown into a cell. Inside the cell, my mother appeared. I'm here to tell you, my mother, she was very abusive in all ways. When I say all ways, I name a form of child abuse. There you go. Bob's your uncle. You got it. She was coming towards me, angry as she always was, ready to tear me limb from limb. And instantly I was gripped by fear, a fear that I've never known. And as I was beginning to find myself cornered in the cell, that's when I heard the door open. And that angel said, that is enough. This is only but a taste. He said, come with me. Let's see the fire. And as we looked out over this cliffside of where my cell was, I saw the lake of fire and everybody in it. I saw people just constantly, constantly being consumed by the fire, but they could not be put out. They, they're, they're fle Unlike the others where their flesh went down to the skeletal, these did not have a chance. Uh, uh, it's weird to even say mercy. No, their, their flesh was not consumed. Like, and I know what you're thinking. How is it that some are in the final lake? Because judgment has not yet come. Mm -hmm. And I thought this while I was there. And the Lord said to me, <laughs> he said, there are some who have come to my throne room asking for mercy. And they were still found guilty. He said, judgment comes to those who challenge a final verdict. I didn't even realize that could be a case, but I guess that makes sense. Or it's... There's a courtroom of heaven. Of course there is. And then I realized, while in hell, if there's courtrooms of heaven, there's courtrooms of hell. Both of them proceed as they are. So this is not the final party, by the way. This is just the people who are getting started. The lake has not yet begun to fill up because there's, and this is why that picture is so spot on. You only see one or two people. You only see a small handful in areas. The majority of the rest are all demons just hanging out. And at that time, I, I thought this was intense enough. And I'm walking through the fire, not being consumed, staying very close to this messenger. And he said, there's one thing left to be seen. 
in the middle of the in the middle of this lake of fire. So imagine it these like this. There is a throne. That that is the throne of the devil. And this is where the messenger told me, he said, now we have come to the end of our journey and you have a decision to make. He said, shall you follow me back and proclaim Christ your Lord or shall I leave you here? Of course I said yes. And it never occurred to me as I... I never realized why could I see him? Why could I see him in this darkness? I, I could see him brightly and so could the demons and everyone stayed away from this light. And then he said, then proclaim it. Proclaim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The moment I screamed it out, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He said, then look up. As I looked up, I realized I was seeing into what is the infancy of the infinity, I mean, of heaven. All its different realms, all its different levels. As you saw, like, like we're saying, this way down is to the throne room of the devil. This way up is to the throne room of God. So all the different levels of heaven, massive amount of levels of heaven. But one throne room can see to the other throne room. It's almost like a diamond. That, at least that's how I was given this perspective. As we started ascending up, we got closer to the light. It was becoming brighter and brighter. And then I looked to the sides of me. And one of the disturbing things about hell is there's also those that are trying to make sure no one escapes it. There was spiders. These demonic spiders is the best way to explain it. And they stayed around the outer, outer edges, the rim of hell. And you could see bodies that were captured in cocoons moving in it. But they couldn't reach me with the messenger I was with. And that's when I, I came back. I woke up. I woke up radically changed. Was I perfect? No. Not by a long shot, but was I was I forever changed knowing that I cannot continue in this direction? Absolutely. It took me 12 years to be to where the point I am now. Um, not just obeying God, but being a fire, fiery minister of God and trying to do everything I can to further his kingdom. And this is my journey through hell. Now you're probably wondering, did all this happen in one night? No. I can tell you it did not. This happened in three nights. Every one of these sections I'm telling you about, I probably got one, no, about two, maybe two sections or one and a half. It, it's hard to say. As I went to sleep every night, this is what I experienced, the torment of hell. It was, it was extremely traumatic. It actually took me a month of practically not being able to work because of what I experienced. Um, I had to ask the Lord, I'm like, how is this possible? How is it possible I went to hell and I'm still here? Don't you have to die? And he reminded me, he said, Ryan, he said, how many physicians have told you that you have severe sleep apnea and you've ignored them? He said, all three nights you quit breathing. Mm -hmm. He said, now I need you to go see a doctor for a CPAP. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's how I went there. And that is my story. And I, I just pray it. God does with it what he needs to, because uh, that's, that's not anywhere any one of us would ever want to go. I, I'm genuinely speechless. I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you had the courage to share 
the most descriptive details of hell. And I know that you went through a lot just to get here today. And I just pray blessing over you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you again. Ryan, is there, you said you're a deliverance minister now. Your life yeah. truly did change. Uh, this is my ministry. Originally, I started off just as you see a lot of the del deliverance community, I was just running out trying to uh, <laughs> slay as many demons as possible. And then God helped me understand something. My wife is a Christian counselor. We must heal the traumas so that we may actually kill people from their demons. Mm. Deliverance is only one part of this. You see, I can clean you up. She can help you stay clean. Otherwise, you will open a door again and again. So, yes, reach out to us as coachfh.com. We're in Boaz, Alabama. Um, don't let distance be a thing. God opens all things. And does all things i know i'm here for his purpose and i'm living it out and understand this deliverance costs nothing it is the children's bread if you need to be delivered of what torments you reach out we do not charge anything for that my wife's counseling she may charge but i don't charge anything for the deliverance because god's never charged us and as you heard what the pastor is experiencing there, <laughs> you you know there's never a chance of I'm ever going to be dipping from this blade. God bless you again. Will you pray for us, Ryan, as we yes, close? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Father God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your blood, your, your son's precious blood and his sacrifice for us all. I know this is a place that you do not want us to go mm -hmm. or ever experience. Father, I pray that every ear shall yes. hear. Yes. Every eye shall be able to perceive. Every spirit shall be, every ho Holy Spirit being in everybody that is of you, Lord. Let them discern the words that have been said today. Let them see and understand the potential of where people are going to go. Father, I pray mercy that people have enough time to hear this in their busy schedule. Yes. Lord, I beg that they put their cell phones down. They put their distractions down. They put themselves and their busy schedules aside because they don't understand the breath you give them today may not be there tomorrow. Yes. Father, may your will be done. May your mm -hmm. kingdom come. Yes. On earth as it is in heaven. We seal this testimony with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. And we thank you for every good thing you've given us, Father. May we never take it in vain. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus name. Amen.